Hello there, this is Gus Kawaja, and today I will be showing you how to build your own cracking password machine using the best combination of hardware performance while having the best price as well. Recently, I built my cracking machine with five GPUs on board. And I thought I would share it with everyone. The goal of this assembly is to have a powerful machine and save money at the same time. The total cost of this machine is around 2000 US dollar. So, if you're a pen tester and have a job that pays you money, then this rig is going to be perfect for your lab tests. Before I begin, I want to let you know that in the description below, you have a complete blog article that describes what I will be showing you in this tutorial. Let's start. Here are some basic tools that you need to have before start assembling this machine. First, you will need some screws for this workshop. I got this small bag with the rig that you will see later. Now don't count on these screws to finish the job. You will need some additional screws collection for building computers like this one. I will provide a link for most of these tools below in the description area. Then you will need a screwdriver for the assembly of this rig and a collection of bits for the flexibility of having multiple choices. You can get these from your local hardware store. The next tool that you need is an anti-static tweezer that you will use for picking up small objects like screws when they fall down during the assembly process. Also, you will need a small garbage container and a cutter for opening boxes or you can use a home knife as well. The rig that we will use for this computer is this one that I got from Amazon. You can get any rig from the internet, but make sure that you will have some space to allow the air to flow easily. Next, we will install the graphic cards on the top area and we will screw them in these holes and we will install the motherboard in the bottom area and the PSU on the side of the bottom area. For the memory of this cracker machine, we will need at least 8 GB of memory. The one that I used is a Ballistics Sport LTDDR4 version. And you can get all the details about it from the description below. For the disk drive, we will use a 128 gigabyte solid state drive with a read speed of 500 and a write speed of 300. A nice quiet drive while the operating system 
is working. Now comes the turn of the processor and we will use an Intel i5. I will not use the processor for Hashcat. So an i5 for the operating system operations is fairly enough. Also, you will not need to buy a fan for this CPU because it already has one in the box. Next, we have the sexy MSI Pro Series Z270 motherboard. Don't worry, we will come back to the details of it later. It's time to see the monster that I will use to supply all the efficient power to our assembly. It's called EVGA Supernova. And it supplies a 1000 watts. And you will see later that this PSU is so much enough to power this machine. Now for this assembly, we will use a maximum of around 600 watts in a peak state. And that's because of the engineering of the graphic cards that we will see later when we test Hashcat. Let's see what's inside. First, you can see the power cable for this PSU. Then you have this motherboard cable. This end will go into the motherboard. And the second one goes into the PSU. Also, you will get a set of these strips for cable management. Let's get more cables and see what we have in this box. Here we have a small bag for the screws. Next, we have the VGA cables. Some of them will support six pins and others will have extensions that support eight pins VGA cards. For the CPU, this one piece end will go into the PSU. Next is the SATA cable and we will use it for the hard drive and for the PCIe risers. It's important to know a fact and it's that we will not connect more than two PCIe risers to one cable. Please don't use the three ends because you don't want to have heating and burning issues. The head where it's written SATA is the one in which you will stick it in the power supply. For the VGA cable, what about the CPU? The same folks, check where it's written CPU. Let's see the core of this power supply. You will be amazed at how many power cables it can handle. In fact, it has one ATX motherboard cable, five VGA cables, four SATA cables, 
and two CPU cables. It's a monster, and we need something reliable like this one for our project. To turn on the motherboard, we will need a power switch. I got this one from Amazon. To be honest, I was skeptical about it first. But it has an alien look, and it looks like a good quality after seeing it in reality. Again, you can check out the parts list in the description below. As you can see, this switch has all the functionalities that you need. The power and reset switch. And the LEDs adapters as well. In the end, all we need is to attach a sticker on the back and then we stick it to the rig. Of course, you will need to connect it to the motherboard and you're ready to power up your machine. Now it's time to check the VGA for this project. The powerful piece that will be responsible for password cracking. Probably you're asking yourself, but why did you choose this one? Well, I wanted a powerful GPU. And I wanted power efficiency at the same time. To be honest, in the end, you will see that the five cards together will consume around 600 watts when they are in the peak state while cracking hashes. Let's check out the PCIe risers that we will use for this assembly. This tricky hardware piece will allow us to connect the five VGA cards to the motherboard without installing them directly. I don't think that you can put five VGA side by side on the motherboard, right? That's why we have a PCIe riser. The assembly is straightforward. You will use one cable for the SATA connection and you will connect this cable to the power supply. Next, you will attach the second USB pin straight to the PCIe slot on the motherboard using a USB cable like the one that you see here in this video. On the other end of this cable, you will attach a special adapter that connects directly to the PCIe slot. An important information here, folks, is that you will need to know the cable gives you the option of connecting three PCIe risers on it. But we're going to use only two. Why? Because three is too much and we want to avoid accidents. And this PSU has plenty of them, so why worrying about cables anyway? Let me show you how to connect the USB cable to the motherboard. All you need to know here is that the plastic end has to point to the outside and the pins to the inside, like I'm doing here. It's time to start the assembly on the motherboard. We will start first with the CPU assembly. Gently remove the cap of the CPU. 
and let's remove the processor from the plastic cover and please pick it from the edges and be careful not to damage your CPU with your hand static charges. There is a mark on your CPU and on the motherboard to align them together and you will realize that the CPU has landed peacefully on your motherboard. Now let's close the metallic cover by applying a small pressure. Next, you need to insert the RAM on the second memory bank slot. Again, I repeat it. As you can see, I'm following the motherboard manufacturer instruction. And that's why I'm inserting the RAM on the second slot. After this, I will stick the power switch cables into the motherboard according to the manufacturer's instructions as well. As you can see, we will use the GFP1 adapter on the motherboard and follow the numbers on this table to assemble them all together. Let's get the rig and put the power supply in place. I will carefully align it inside this rig. Next, I will get the screws and start tightening them together to lock it down safely. Alrighty, it looks like that our PSU is locked in place. Now we need to lock the motherboard. I will make sure to align the holes together. And after that, start tightening the screws as well. Next, I will assemble the CPU fan. After that, align the fan on top of the CPU and start pushing the four corners down. Then we need to insert the power cable into the fan plug on the motherboard. Now we need to supply the power to the CPU. I will insert the two pieces part into the motherboard and the single one on the other end into the PSU. After the step, we need to give power to the motherboard, right? The one piece end will be inserted into the motherboard. And the two pieces end will be inserted into the PSU. Next, I will assemble 
the SSD drive by inserting the SATA power cable into the PSU and the SATA data cable into the motherboard. Okay, dokie. We're done, folks. All we need now is to boot up this machine and start setting up the BIOS. But before doing all this, we need to download few drivers first. The first driver to get is the one for the VGA card. Browse to evga.com slash support slash download. And make sure that the graphics card tab is selected. Then from the family drop down menu, select the 10 series option. My operating system is going to be Windows 10. And check to show the latest driver and click on the submit button to download the executable. Next, we need to get the latest BIOS update for our motherboard. So, browse to the link that you see in the browser. Then scroll down to the BIOS section. In my case, I'm using the latest version, 7A59V17. Finally, click on the red arrow button to download it locally to your machine. And from there, you will copy everything that we downloaded here to a USB stick. Last but not least, I used a tool called 3DPNet. You will need this application to install the drivers for the network card in offline mode. In fact, I tried to use the drivers that came with the motherboard installation CD, but they didn't work from the first shot. In fact, to be honest, I had to run the 3DP net tool first, then the drivers were installed with no issues. I'm trying to give you some hints here, folks, because hardware drivers can sometimes be a pain in the neck. Let's boot up this monster and update the BIOS before anything else. From here on, you need to be very patient. Again, you need to be very patient. I already removed a lot of waiting minutes. So you won't get bored. But the first boot will take a few minutes. And patience is your secret to successfully get this machine to work. To get inside the BIOS, you need to keep your finger on the delete key and proceed from there to get to this window. Next, hit F7 on your keyboard to get into the advanced screen mode. After that, click the M flash button and a pop-up message is going to show that your system will reboot in flash mode. Of course, I want it to reboot. So let's hit the OK button. Once booted, I will choose the USB stick drive from the list and browse to the update file to select it. Now, the BIOS will take a few minutes to update and it will boot up once more. After 
BIOS update reboot then get into the BIOS because we need to change some configuration items before we boot into the Windows operating system at this stage hit F7 to switch into advanced mode and then click on the settings button the first thing we need to change is the PCI subsystem settings I want you to change the first setting peg 0 and the second one peg 1 from auto to gen 1 you're not going to see me changing them here and that's because I change them later after the first boot and unfortunately I did not record those changes in fact at this stage while I was recording I was doing some experiments here to make the changes also I want you to set the last setting the 4G memory crypto to enabled next go to the integrated peripherals settings and disable the audio controller because we don't need an audio controller for this type of machine it's up to you keep it on if you're willing to use the audio in your own setup after this go to IO configuration and open the serial com port zero config and disable it as well we're not done yet do the same for the parallel LPT port and disable it the final setting to change is the Windows OS configuration since I will be using Windows 10 for this machine I will enable the first option and disable Windows 7 option now go back and click on the X button on the top right corner of your screen and you should see this pop-up window that displays all the changes that you just committed click on yes to accept the changes and reboot your machine after this step let your Windows operating system start an important note here is that we haven't installed any graphic cards yet I'm using the built-in graphic card for the first time just to make sure that everything is working and then we will install the GPUs one after the other later not now if your Windows machine has logged in successfully please go ahead and install your network drivers for internet connectivity right after that update your Windows operating system to the latest and greatest and make sure that all your drivers are working perfectly you can use the device manager in Windows to check for your driver status in the end you should have clean drivers without any warning messages so if that's the case then we can proceed further and start installing your first GPU card moreover an important hint that probably can help you to solve your problems you can use the motherboard drivers CD by copying its contents into a USB drive and then 
try to use it to update and install the drivers in the device manager. Now, why we're doing everything on a USB stick? Because we don't have a CD drive, right? All right. It's time to install the first GPU card. Let's bring this monster. GeForce GTX 1060. As you can see, the power adapter is already connected at the top. And I already connected the PCIe riser at the bottom of this card previously. Before I start any work on this card, I need to fix it tightly on the top of the rig using a single screw. Check this out. We can use the second adapter to power another GPU as well, as I showed you earlier. Perfect. Let's connect the other end to the power supply. And let's take the power cable from the riser and plug it as well. After that, I will unplug the HDMI cable from the built-in card and plug it into the GPU card. Finally, don't forget to connect the USB adapter from the riser to the PCIe slot on the motherboard. And I will be using the first PCIe slot, which is labeled PCIe 1. Wait, do not install the second GPU yet at this stage. Just try to log in to the Windows machine and make sure that you install the driver that we downloaded earlier together. After making sure that your VGA works, then you have two options. The first one is to install each card by itself. And you will need a lot of patience to do so, but it's rewarding at the end. Why? Because you can identify the problem after the installation of each GPU. Your second fastest option is for the people who have less patience. And you can install all the four GPUs at once. But it will be hard to know which one is failing after logging into your OS. I have a few tips for you guys as well. Tip number one, remember the first boot you will use the built-in GPU. Tip number two, after that, you can start installing only one GPU. Tip number three, install the rest of the GPUs. Tip number four, avoid PCIe slot number two on the motherboard. So the second GPU will be inserted at PCIe slot number three. Believe me, you will thank me for this one because it will avoid you kicking your head in the wall. I'm not done yet. For tip number five, do not get excited and use the six PCIe slots. Use only five of them by excluding PCIe slot number two. Now, congratulations, folks. You have your five GPUs installed successfully. Next, let's install Hashcat and start the fun. Browse 
to hashcat.net. And on the top of the page, you will see the download section. Pick the Hashcat binary section and hit the download link to download it locally to your machine. If you scroll down on this page, you will see all the powerful functionalities of this tool. I advise you to check them out. The next interesting tool that you need to download is the Hashcat GUI version. And you can get the latest version of this application on hashkiller.co.uk slash hashcatgui.aspx. You will see later in the demo how this application is going to be very useful. I'm assuming that you're a professional and you will be able to install all these applications by yourself. Now, let me show you the afterburner settings that I'm using for this machine. I have set the power limit to 100, the core clock to 100 as well, and the memory clock to 400. I don't recommend that you push this too far. Believe me, I tried it before, and you don't want to have a blue screen on your PC. All righty, folks, let's crack some hashes. I will open my browser and go to an online MD5 generator. Here, I will generate an MD5 hash for the hello world string. Next, I will copy this hash to a text file. And I will use this file as an input for the hashcat to crack. Save it and let's open hashcat GUI. At the top, the application is pointing to the hashes file that we just filled with the MD5 hello world value. Since I will be using a dictionary file, I will leave the mode to straight and the hash type to MD5 since this is the hash algorithm that we used on the website. After that, I set the generated to hashcat rule. If you want to change the rule, you need to browse to the hashcat rules folder and pick your favorite one from there. Next, set the maximum temperature that each card should reach before aborting. Then, select the five GPU devices that will participate in the cracking process. I don't recommend to include the CPU, unless you have a very powerful processor, like Xeon, for example. After that, we will save the discovered password to an output file. Also, set Hashcat to ignore the warnings and to update the screen every 60 seconds of the progress. At the bottom, make sure that you point to the Hashcat executable. Finally, before starting to crack the hash, we need to identify the dictionary file. So, click on the word lists tab and make sure that you add your own dictionary file here in this window. Let's go to the main screen and click 
on the seek and destroy button. Alrighty, Hashcat is starting to warm up by loading the dictionary file. I will pause this video, but first let me show you the power that Hashcat is consuming at this moment. This is an important factor to take it into consideration. Check this out, folks. I have cracked the hash, and it took around 30 minutes to do it. Isn't this beast machine amazing? Oh yeah, it is. I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial, folks, as much as I did. I also hope that by watching it, you were able to learn something new, or it maybe helped you to build your own special cracking PC like this one. Remember that you have a summary blog article that will explain what you just saw in this video. Enjoy it.